Mechanics is the branch of physics dealing with the behavior of physical objects when they are subjected to forces or displacement. Classical mechanics is the field of mechanics that deals with the physical laws that describe the motion of bodies under the action of a system of forces at everyday sizes and velocities. Now, classical mechanics is limited in terms of size and speed. When the size of the object gets extremely small, quantum mechanics comes into play. When the speed of the object gets extremely fast, relativistic mechanics comes into play. At large scales of size and distance, celestial mechanics comes into play. However, this is actually just an expansion of the principles of classical mechanics to large scales. Classical mechanics has an ancient history. The science goes back at least to ancient Greece with Greek philosophers like Aristotle. In practice, many of its principles go back even further, even if they were not yet formulated. Classical mechanics became a full-fledged empirical science, starting with Galileo. It grew into the beginnings of physics as it is known today, with men like Isaac Newton. The basic concepts include linear force, in which force equals acceleration times mass. With circular motion, we have the moment of inertia of an object, which is the object's mass times the square of the radius of the circular motion. There is also angular velocity, which is the linear velocity divided by the radius of the circular motion. Angular acceleration is linear acceleration divided by the radius of the circular motion. Finally, we have torque, which is the circular motion equivalency of force, and it equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. In classical mechanics, gravity is the dominant natural force. Now, the force of gravity equals minus the gravitational constant times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second object divided by the square of the distance between the two masses. Note that the gravitational force is always negative because its vector always points towards the center of mass of the other body. The effect that a force has on the motion of an object not only depends on the size of the force and the mass, but also on how it is applied to the object. A force applied directly to the center of mass of an object results only in linear motion. A force applied a little off the center of mass results in linear motion and a slow rotation. A force applied more off the center of mass results in linear motion and a faster rotation. A force applied at the edge of a mass results in linear motion and a still faster rotation. Furthermore, a force applied a little off the center of mass on the opposite side results in linear motion and a slow rotation in the opposite direction. And a force applied more off the center of mass on the opposite side results in linear motion and a faster rotation in the opposite direction. And finally, a force at the edge of a mass on the opposite side results in linear motion and a still faster rotation in the opposite direction. Classically, gravity is the universal force of attraction between objects with mass. However, general relativity shows gravity to be a result of a warping of space around those objects. Now, the force of gravity equals minus the gravitational constant times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second object divided by the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. The force of gravity acting on an object near the Earth is minus the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the object divided by the distance to the center of the Earth squared. This means that the acceleration due to gravity of an object near the Earth equals minus the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance to the center of the Earth squared. A pumpkin chunking air cannon is a good example to illustrate this principle because it shoots an object on a ballistic path that is perfect for this illustration. If you fire a pumpkin chunking air cannon horizontally, the more power you put behind the shot, the further the pumpkin goes. If you raise the angle at which you fire your pumpkin chunking air cannon, the pumpkin goes further up to 45 degrees and above 45 degrees, it decreases reaching zero at 90 degrees. However, they do go progressively higher, reaching a peak at 90 degrees. If you fire your pumpkin chunking air cannon at a constant angle, the more power you put behind the shot, the further the pumpkin goes. On Earth, this only works over short distances. This 
model assumes a flat surface, but the Earth is round, and as a result, the Earth's surface actually curves away from an object as it moves horizontally. To illustrate this on a larger scale, requires pulling out a super punking chunking air cannon. As a result, as the punking goes further, it drops further than it would on a flat surface. At slow speed, this effect is small. In fact, so small that it can be ignored. But as the punking goes faster, the effect becomes more pronounced. It makes the punking go even faster, and the effect becomes even more pronounced. As the pumpkin goes even faster, the effect becomes even more pronounced, such that the pumpkin's path actually starts to curve with the Earth's surface. As the pumpkin goes even faster, its path curves still more with the Earth's surface. Increase the pumpkin's speed even more, and its path curves to the point where it reaches the other side of the Earth. Increase the pumpkin speed just a little bit more, and its path curves to the point where it misses the Earth's surface entirely, resulting in a complete orbit. This is the basis for satellites orbiting the Earth. It is also the basis of celestial mechanics. In one way, the key to flying really is throwing yourself at the ground in such a way that you miss it. It just takes a speed of about 4.5 miles per second to do it around the Earth. Several machines are mechanical devices which change the direction and or magnitude of a force. They are generally the simplest mechanisms for providing a mechanical advantage. A mechanical advantage is also referred to as leverage. The term simple machine is also used to refer to the six classical simple machines which were defined by Renaissance scientists. These are the lever, the wheel and axle, the pulley, the inclined plane, the wedge, and the screw. In the ideal simple machine, the energy output exactly equals the energy input. This principle is based on the principle of conservation of energy, otherwise known as the first law of thermodynamics. It needs to be noted that the real world is seldom ideal. In real simple machines, a small amount of energy will be lost to friction. Energy can also be lost in a simple machine by material imperfections in the material the machine is made of. A complex machine is any system consisting of simple machines that work together as one machine. A complex machine can be as simple as a pair of scissors or as complex as a spaceship. Scissors are a good example of a complex machine. They consist of a wheel and axle, two levers, and two wedges. Classical mechanics has virtually unlimited applications. It is useful at the scale of size and speed of everyday life, since those were the scale it was developed on. Every aspect of human life is affected by the application of force in one manner or another. Forces like gravity and those of impact are all around us. Most of us are victims of them at some point in our lives. Our own bodies use them to do work, including the use of simple machines like levers in our arms and legs. In conclusion, classical mechanics is the foundation of physics. It is where physics had its start and where its main principles were laid down. Classical mechanics works fine within our everyday experience, but reaches its limit when dealing with the very fast and very small. 